The armed forces of Ukraine continue their attempts at offensive actions on a wide sector of the front. Failures of the first days of the Ukrainian offensive on the southern front lines apparently led to a change in vision for the Ukrainian command. Kiev realized that its forces failed to achieve any decisive success on one sector of the front in that short period. This does not mean that the Ukrainian command in the West have abandoned the idea of recapturing lost territory in the summer of 2023, but they have been forced to revise the timing of their planned offensive operations. That is why the Kakoskaya HPP were struck, in order to destroy minefields and advanced positions of the Russian army in this sector of the front. The water will definitely be gone by midsummer. Apparently, Kiev believes that it will not give the Russians time to re-strengthen their positions on the eastern bank of the Dnieper River. Another reason for the destruction of the Kokova Dam was to launch another wave of anti-Russian hysteria in the Western mainstream media, which will allow Zelensky's office to demand more military supplies and financial assistance. In the coming days, the armed forces of Ukraine are expected to escalate battles in the Zaporizhzhia region, as well as launch new large-scale raids deep into Russian territory in the Belgorod region. The success of these actions will depend not so much on the available forces and means of the armed forces of Ukraine, but on the effectiveness of the Russian army's response to these challenges. Judging by the poor results of the latest Ukrainian attacks in both in the Belgorod and the Zaporizhzhia regions, the Russian command has learned lessons from its previous mistakes. Over the past four days, Kiev has suffered significant losses in manpower and military equipment. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the Ukrainian army has lost more than 4,000 servicemen killed and wounded and dozens of pieces of military equipment, including NATO main battle tanks. The Russians retain air supremacy on the front lines. In Moscow has managed to achieve some parity in the use of strike and reconnaissance UAVs in battles. The Russian aerospace forces continue high-precision strikes both in the operational rear of the Ukrainian grouping of troops and in the strategic depth of Ukrainian territory, destroying key military infrastructure facilities. On June 6, a successful strike on another Ukrainian command center was declared. Kiev's current strategy relies on the hope that Russia will exhaust its military potential faster than the collective NATO military machine will. This idea seems reasonable only if NATO decides to directly enter the war with Russia. Now the flow of NATO weapons is simply stupidly burned up on the front lines without any results.